Hey, Chemistry Crew, Mr. Collier here. I want to go over pages five to seven. I might not go over every single thing in this, uh, but I want to hit some highlights. So we have here on page five, this solubility versus temperature graph. And let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing at once. Uh, this is something that's in your reference packet, and it shows the number of grams of a variety of different solutes that will dissolve in 100 grams of water at different temperatures, OK? So we went over this in the notes a little bit. And uh, we can see uh, there's lots of different chemicals on here all over the place. So really, the best way to approach a graph this hectic is to see what do I even want to know. So I'm just going to scroll on to the next page, uh, zoom back in for a second here. Which substance does not appear to increase greatly in solubility as the temperature is increased? OK, so the answer is going to be salt. And you can see that there. But let's go back up and take a look at this graph. So it's, like I said, it's pretty chaotic, but as you can see, many of these lines are swooping upwards, right? And so I'm kind of looking for, is there one that doesn't do that? And there is, it's right here, it's sodium chloride, and it's pretty flat, right? And when you have a nice flat line like that, it just tells you this is something that you can heat it and it's not really gonna dissolve that much better, okay? Um, then we do have um, some substances that actually decrease in solubility as the temperature's increased. Uh, this is very common for gases, and those are going to be ones with negative slopes. So here's HCl with a negative slope, ammonia with a negative slope, sulfur dioxide with a negative slope. So we got some negative slopes there. All right. Uh, can I clear that? Who knows? Time out. Bam, cleared it. <laughs> Let's go to some more. Which substance in appears to increase the most as temperatures increase, right? So like, oh, which one of these? That would be the steepest curve. So when you look, uh, again, broad picture at some of these curves, some of them are pretty steep, but I think the steepest one is this one right here. It's kind of skyrocketing, and that's KNO3 potassium nitrate. And so those are the kind of questions you can ask generally, you know, which ones don't change much, which ones change negatively, which ones change a lot. Um, then you can get into some very specifics like um, which is most soluble at zero degrees or least soluble at zero degrees. And for that, I'm just going to go to zero degrees. And the least would be this guy right here, which when I trace over the line, that's KClO3. And when I look at most, that's boop, boop, way up here potassium iodide, right? So there's your least and most soluble at zero degrees. And then you can change that for any given temperature. Uh, you can also look at like specific temperatures, 73 degrees, what would uh, be the same? And that's going to be two lines that cross at 73. So here back onto my graph, here's 70, here's 80. And I'm looking for, oh, look, here's two lines that are crossing right there. Those two substances must have the same solubility at that particular temperature. It's interesting, too, because one's going up and one's going down. That's what makes the lines cross. You can also look at what is the most of something that can be dissolved at a particular temperature. So here we're looking at uh, KNO3 at 70 degrees. So here's that KNO3 curve. It's actually already highlighted. And we're looking um, 70 degrees. So I trace that up and boom, that appears to be right around 140. Uh, is there anything else that we should be talking about? Because you see that's those these are some of the kinds of questions, you know, at 70 degrees, which can form a more concentrated solution, right? So I would go to 70 degrees and compare those two lines, right? 70 degrees, KNO3 is above pretty much everything. So that's going to be your answer. But you're kind of comparing at 70 degrees, which one's higher on the y-axis of the two. So you can see that's kind of the idea behind these curves. We can look at... Um, different chemicals. I guess one other thing we can look at is whether something would be saturated or unsaturated. That's a good one. So here's 20. What type of solution would be if we had 120 grams of Ki in 100 mils of water at 10 degrees, right? So I'm looking at the Ki curve. That's potassium iodide. That's this one, right? And we've got, sorry, I already forgot. <laughs> we've got 120 grams at 10 degrees. So here's 10 degrees. 
120 grams, right? So we are under the curve. Anything under the curve is unsaturated. So that would be everything down here for potassium iodide. If it happened to be on the curve, that would be saturated. And anything above the curve would be super saturated. So that's some of the different questions. The actual uh, PDF of this whole answer key will be on Classroom for you to look over all. I know I kind of been scrolling back and forth, but that's the general idea for how to answer these questions. Well, let me know if you have any questions.